Hello everyone again and I'd like to present you in this series of crazy bullet gambits an extremely interesting one even I fell for it uh, thanks for our editor Craig who asked me to do it and it happens in Alekine opening it's, it's called uh, O'Sullivan's Gambit and to be honest with you I lost I believe twice against it and they didn't know how to simply answer the following gambit so what is it all about uh, e4 knight f6 alekine opening we all know that the alekine opening that the main answer in like statistically 80 percent of the games why just plays e5 and then you go knight d5 so after d4 da -da -da -da, b5 can you believe it you just sack the pawn on b5 seemingly like what is this guy doing he's just giving up the pawn let me just take it and then boom c5 black just sacrifices breaks into the center and wants to go with the queen a5 check so take a look at this following tricks so if white plays one of the most logical and tempting moves d takes c5 boom queen a5 gives check and attacks both king on e1 and bishop on b5 so what is gonna happen if they simply go with bishop d2 you just take the piece if they go queen d2 you just take the piece i won a game like this on lee chess when my opponent went for queen d5 because he thought like after everything he's gonna be up uh, and he's gonna be able to he's gonna be up to a pawn uh, and uh, to get a piece back I just went with the bishop b7 and I eventually win the pawn on g2 and win the game. It's not about winning the pawn on g2, it's about winning the rook on h1. And of course, you can't play the most logical and the most uh, classic uh, defensive approach with the knight on c3, which defends the bishop on b5 because of knight takes c3. And I'm just going to show you uh, a very interesting uh, thing. They got to go with knight e2. Uh, for example, in a chess club with a couple of friends, we analyzed this and one guy uh, came with this approach, knight e2. So after queen b5, they can have double attack c4 approach. Not the end of the world, don't worry. You take on c5, you take on d5, now you attack both. Pawn on g2 and pawn on e5. When they play knight g on f3, bishop a6. What a powerful uh, resource by black that controls the allied squares uh that absolutely doesn't allow why to make short castle and uh, creates lots of weaknesses also keep in mind you just have a bishop here you'd like to go with the knight c6 possibly knight b4 knight d3 check afterwards and black is just doing great right so let me just show you apart from d take c5 because uh i guess not all your opponents will fall for this trick what happens if they go with c4 C4 happened in, in an interesting game in Canada between 221 and 2200 guys. Actually, uh, the guy who, with the black pieces was 2300. Fida and he took on D4. Another interesting way of fighting because if you take on D5, Queen A5 check, attacking the bishop, and once again you don't have the knight C3 resource because you take there. So after Queen D4, you just go with the knight B4. A very obvious fork they have to defend um, for example engines in this position say you gotta defend it with queen d1 but after queen c7 knight f3 a6 bishop a4 queen c4 you know what uh, i have i see nothing wrong with this position for black but the thing is this guy went for queen c3 and believe it or not position is already uh, kind of debatable uh, the guy played queen a5 uh, with the idea of knight c2 and you absolutely can go with this so all of a sudden you threaten knight c2 you threaten the king and the rook and if they go look at this they can go a3 because you give check and you win the rook once again nice trick uh from another point of view they go king f1 not a big deal i play a6 and now you don't have a place for the bishop on top of all that if you play a3 i can always play e6 and you can't touch my knight so that happened in uh, in a basic game after like eight takes before that happened in, in, in one of those games, queen a1, knight e2, this guy played queen b1 check, 
queen f3, played bishop before check, and blundered the following tactics by black. Uh, this guy played bishop b7. The point was he couldn't take on b7 because of queen d3, and that was checkmate. What a nice uh, mating net. So they gotta go with the queen b3, you just go a5, uh, this guy played bishop d5, came up with queen g6. He's happy to exchange because he's absolutely winning in that endgame. He still uh, forces and exchanges, plays a4 to play bishop b3, and that's how he won the game. Uh, what a nice game. What a nice uh, line. And finally, most of these guys in the chess base that I found games that were... Um, you know, like uh, played in this creation, they went for a c3. You still take on d4, and they still have lots of chances to make mistakes. For example, c takes d4, boom, queen a5, go home, buddy. You just lost your bishop on b5. You want you want to go with a queen d4, not a big problem. But here we have a specialty, queen c7. You can't touch knight on d5 because of already seen variation and trick with the bishop b7. And not only pawn on g2, but rook on h1 is falling down. Also, keep in mind, pawn on e5 is about to uh, drop here as well. So after knight f3, six castles, knight c6, I see nothing wrong with this position because maybe engines, uh, you know, like hype a little bit more for white. But I don't see anything wrong with the bishop pair here for black. And finally, there is a final variation. If they go with c3, c takes, and they go with knight f3. You just go with knight c7, uh, nice one. Uh, you just uh, threaten the bishop on b5. They gotta, for example, they gotta take. They don't have to take. They can move the bishop. You take on c3. You, but if they play knight d4 to keep the pawn up, at least you want the bishop pair. You threaten this one, and uh, I like after bishop f4, queen b6, involving queen into the action. Bishop a6, uh, simply uh, threatening both knight and queen. And g5 would be my uh, bullet and blitz approach in this position because when they take, I see full, uh, let's just call it blitz bullet compensation. Okay, engines once again give white here almost decisive advantage, but I highly disagree because we got a bishop here, we got an open g file, possibly weak g2, they can hardly make castle or Actually, they can't because of knight d4 and queen g2 mate or the queen is dropping. So uh, this looks like just so nice for black. Hope that you enjoyed in this short video and good luck in O'Sullivan's Gambit. And hopefully uh, you all are going to win some nice, easy and short games there. Thanks so much and see you soon.